It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in, because in this video we are going to take a close look at the Hyperbase FC. You know what, this name is quite confusing. You would say like it's a Famicom, but it's absolutely not like a Famicom. It looks like a Famicom, but it isn't. Yeah. Are you still following me? The retro game system that supports all the way up to PlayStation Portable. Sometimes, you know, like we have seen a lot of these Android box things, but this, I can tell you, it's something different. It's always fun to check out what's on the box. So this thing is plug and play, dual system. Yeah, basically it's an Android box, so you can use it like an Android box, I'm guessing. 70 plus emulators, support any game, support multi multiplayer. Then we have support 20 plus languages and classic retro design. Yeah, that last one is absolutely true. <laughs> Let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get in the inside because, like always, we're going to get ourselves a lot of the same stuff. Or not. Let's find out. So what are we going to get? We're going to get ourselves the manual, or basically explaining how Emmy Alec work, and I must say, like, they do an okay job with that. So for general questions, and most of the things can be found on YouTube, of course. Then we have, like, the remote, just for the Android part. Then, what I do like about it, that we have like an on off switch nowadays on these power supplies, so we do actually have an on off switch, because these systems do lacking of it. It's kind of weird, but let's take a close look later on with the system, do a quick overview. What is interesting, we do get ourselves like a hard drive nowadays, where we have like an SD card. In the previous video, we do have like a gigantic hard drive, pretty damn cool. And of course, the controllers and another, let's say manual for the controllers, and the HDMI cable. But let's talk about the controllers. They are like our typical like controllers when it comes to the overall quality. But I must say like they're not the cheapest quality. We do have like a rubber compound joystick. But when I'm going to do the test over here, the button test, oh boy, you can just feel that they are like, let's say if you're having like three different qualities, we have quality one that's like the cheap to the cheap cheap. This is absolutely quality number two. A three is more like better quality with good buttons, but this is not great. No, absolutely not. The Hyperbase FC, I must be honest, like, it's quite confusing that they're using this very thick looking Famicom. And no, we cannot really play Famicom games with it. At the back, we do have like an HDMI port, LAN port, input for the power supply. This thing weighs, by the way, almost nothing. Then we have like the SD card. And the reason why, because this is basically like combined with the hard drive. Let's talk about that later. Here we have like the slot where we're going to put in the hard drive. So that's pretty damn cool. So let's double check it. We need to put them in here like this. So this construction is quite awesome, to be honest. Like this thing doesn't do anything nothing to eject and we have like two buttons so far i know like they don't do anything at the front we're going to get two usb ports and then we have like the power on light and the ir function for the remote and of course the android part but the overall quality of the case itself it's very nice looking like i don't know if the camera picks it up we do have like this let's say pattern on it it's very thick plastic, so in overall the case weighs almost nothing because there was almost nothing inside on like a PCB that we're going to take a close look in the teardown. But again, like it looks kind of cool, but I don't understand why they chosen the Famicom version. But the way how this actually works is quite interesting. So we do have like this combination of a hard drive and an SD card. We do get ourselves like an 8GB SD card. This basically contains Emmy Alec. You can just download this for free, by the way, and just configure it like this. But all of the information that you need to add, think about the game, music, and etc., it will be implemented in this hard drive. And the reason why they do this is because when you're going to get into, like, say, the bigger SD cards, think about the 256 gigabyte. They're going to be quite expensive to buy. And I think it's way cheaper to get yourself like a hard drive like this. So I understand why they have made this decision to do it like this. So when powering on the system, it will automatically boot into Emmy Alec. And if the hard disk has been configured correctly, you will also see that it is going to load up all of the platforms that are available on this machine. But let's take a close look at the menu itself. So it's just simple, the same typical like menu that we're going to get with Emmy Alec because these are like pre-installed themes. And personally, I really love this theme. This one looks really cool. So this thing is called Crystal, if I'm seeing it correctly. When I'm pressing start, you can go to the Emmy Alec settings, for example, and the UI. And with the UI, you can just basically go back to the, let's say, ES theme, Emmy Alec Carbon. And with the Carbon, you can basically choose this one, go back, it will reload everything, and you will go to get yourself like a completely different different menu but what are we going to get is absolutely like a shitload of different emulators that we can play on this thing and i think that's pretty damn cool so if you're going to add your games you have like so much stuff you can basically play on this of course take consideration these things will have limitations when it comes to the overall performance because they're like like very expensive boxes to buy or especially one that comes to the hardware they're using but when it comes to let's say playing up to playstation one we don't have like any issues so i want to try out some old school stuff but also particularly trying to see like how far we can push this device 
So if you're going to be in a game itself and you want to make a quick load quick save, this is only working with an emulator in combination with RetroArch, pressing the joysticks. Here we're going to get ourselves like the extra option where we can make a quick load, quick save, and of course return to the game and mess around with RetroArch if you want to or need. But in the end, this is a very easy way to basically play around with it and yeah, just make a quick load and quick save. But when it comes to these books already mentioned before, like they will run just fine when it comes to the old school stuff. And pressing select to start at the same time, we're going to get this message, which you can see if we press again, so you need to press it twice and we're going back to the Emmy Alec main menu. Okay, so the print promise, if you added a lot of stuff to this thing and like finding your favorite game is going to be quite difficult. So pressing select brings you to the special menu where we can basically like filter, but also like search for a certain letter. Super convenient and this way you can just easily find your games. So let's try some MAME to begin with. Take consideration if you want to play some Killer Instinct or Tekken MAME. This will not run on this box whatsoever. We need to have like a way more powerful device. Think about mini PC or something like that. He's going to shoot. No, he's not going to shoot. Oh crap. But we've reached the point that we can actually play some Mortal Kombat Just Grey. Despite like the D-pad feels quite horrible. We can actually do some moves by the way. Okay, so when it comes to N64, we do have like the same performance website we just had with many of these boxes. Think about a blessed corp that will like struggle. Cruise the ESA, have like a lot of problems. Golden Eye, 007, you name it. We will have like the same issues all over again because N64 is just quite difficult emulator to run on these very cheap boxes. Also, it runs on native resolution. I can just tell because due of like the horrible like, way how it looks. But again, that's what we need to accept from these cheap boxes. But actually, I just reason I want to pick up this particular game because it's also like a kind of a benchmark for me. But also, it is a game that runs pretty damn good, and it is not a launch title, what I understand of. Because when you go into the launch titles, think about the income racing; they work just fine. Okay, so when it comes to Nintendo DS, I am not the biggest fan of just playing under this because you have two of the two screens. By pressing the right at the joystick, we can basically go into the configuration over here so we can mess around if you want to and make a quick load, quick save. So I think it's pretty damn cool. But the overall performance is quite good. You can switch between the screens if you want to. You can put them in different positions. Another system I wanted to try is the real 3DO entertainment system or interactive multi player whatever the thing is like when it comes to the system i did have like some mixed performance and i mean like sometimes we do have like some great performance with this but depending what kind of box you can just see and i hope you can hear it that it's going to be stuttering like crazy you can hear the audio is completely messed up it's a little bit of bummer because the video have like some hidden gems to it think about return fire that's also like ported by way to playstation so it's not going to be a big deal but well, street fighter is an absolutely great game so another one but yeah it's it's not great this, this is just absolutely unplayable. Two dimensional games will run better, but again, yeah, it's a mix. Yeah. But all the stuff you can basically emulate on this device, Open Beach of Rage is so much fun. And I mean like, this is so cool, you have like these custom made games that you actually can play on your box, so absolutely epic. Okay, so next up, let's take a close look at a little bit of Beat of Rage and how good it actually runs on this. I'm gonna say that when I'm having a system like this, this is the stuff I <laughs> usually play. Just some casual beat em ups or getting beat up by the guys. So, damn, this game is freaking difficult. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, so the reason I just choose this game because it is really great on these boxes. Sometimes we'll have like a mixed performance and the means like that we're just having like a little bit better performance until we're going to play in the game, but oh boy. Yeah, and it even crashes. Great. Okay, so let's skip to Sega Dreamcast just to see actually how that will run on the device. I do hear that it struggles here and there. It can be a problem with the configuration. So what is great with this? We can press both, so basically the joystick, where it brings us into, let's say, the configuration of the retro arc. Take consideration, you can mess around with it. For example, we can implement frame skip. Let's play a little bit further. We can hear the audio is completely messed up. It is like going crazy with the frame. 
frames per second. So let's take a close look if we can manage to get it a little bit better running on this. So we have like the internal resolution has been set by 640 by 480. So we cannot really like measure around with that too much. We can put it on 320 by 240, but it's going to be looking pretty damn horrible. So the next thing we can basically do implement is putting in some frame skipping maybe. So let's do that. Let's set it to one. Let's go back and let's see if we're going to get a little bit better performance. It's going to be a little bit better. Again, like you can mess around with the resolution. But in my opinion, this is not a great way how to play. So the next thing I wanted to try is some Need for Speed 2. And yeah, already beginning of this video, I already mentioned that we do have like an amazing overall performance for PlayStation 1 or up to PlayStation 1. And that's actually what we're going to get with these boxes. We've reached the point that everything on PlayStation 1 runs great. I don't know if you really want to play a game like that, but Need for Speed is absolutely a great classic game. I did and played a lot. I think it was like especially Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit that I played a lot back in the day. So much fun. I really love the funky music they used in this. So I don't know if the PlayStation version was like a less quality when it comes to the PC version, but nevertheless, you can see like this runs pretty damn good. Woohoo! Holy crap! Oh yeah. Another system that I was like going to be like added to this is PlayStation Portable, but Despite this game actually runs pretty okay, I must say that I have seen a lot of glitches with this. Two-dimensional games in general are playable, but I can tell you it's going to be absolutely mixed and a big gamble. So we do have like the option to mess around with the settings, so if you have like some problems you can mess around with the frame skip, stuff like that. But again, like it's not a great system to play on this. This device is not, just not capable of running this, so no, no, but again like Seem to be running pretty damn good frames per second, but I can tell you, like, I've played a lot of these games on these cheap devices, and yeah, no, no. Looking at the Hyperbase FC specification list, this is something that we've seen many times before. And looking at, let's say, the gameplay in general, you will see that we have like similar results when it comes to previous boxes. Yeah, so overall, like, I think it's nothing special, and that is something we will see eventually in this review. Or that is my opinion about this. But okay guys, so let's do a quick teardown. Let's rip it apart. Let's see how this thing looks in the inside because I think it's quite interesting. And let's see if I can use my screwdriver, remove all of the screws. The first thing I've noticed, the first thing I've noticed is like, it's going to be cool. It's going to be coming quite hard. And oh, damn it, I need to find my screwdriver. Where is it? Where is it? But I must say that I find this one of the most interesting, like say versions I have, have seen in this year. At the front we're going to get ourselves the PCB with two micro switches. Now what is quite funny is like we do have basically two working switches. To begin with when you're pressing the left one over here we can just boot up the system too. I think so we have like the ultimate switch basically at the power supply or the master switch where you can basically turn off the power. But this one has the option to turn it off very safely that will save all of your data or your metadata. So that's pretty cool. But the weird thing is, it also does the same thing with the right one. A little bit of a bummer and a missed opportunity. It would be so cool if you also can use this version, not for powering on of the system, but you can actually like use this for like making a quick save or quick load or something like that. So again, that's the reason I said it's a missed opportunity. So basically the two main boards are connected over here with these cables. What I really love about this like main board, it's pretty damn cool. The Hyperbase version 2 point one it's like having like an absolutely like completely new redesign something you don't see back in the day so let's remove the main board just to see what are we going to get something i don't need to forget by the way is removing the sd card because if you don't do that it's accidentally going to crack it you do have an issue and a problem i always recommend by the way making a backup of this thing simply because if you don't do it and it get broken you don't have the configuration so your system will not boot up anymore in emulic but let's remove this thing and let's see what are we going to get more with this removing the tiny parkers here we're going to get ourselves the main board and okay that's a kind of weird way so they added the mac code or something like that to there with double-sided tape okay so here we have like the specification this is the s905x chip over here so yeah, it also shows it when booting up and it explains why a lot of stuff is doesn't really run great because it's just like some old school tech they're using, like the really old school ones. Let's see if I can remove 
this cooling element over here that's prior with my tool but no they i think they glued it on over here i must say what i do like about it they're using this very big i say cooling element and it also like wait not only like basically takes all of the heat of the cpu but it also takes the heat of the ram so i think they did a great job and in my opinion they will do listening but there was no active cooling whatsoever i don't know if it's going to be needing it but hey active cooling is always better than passive in my opinion so when removing the sd card and the hard drive we're going to be booting up in the dual system or just android because that is actually what it is it's just an android box but it is really an old one i can tell you that so let's take a close look at the settings just see what kind of android is even running on but in the first attempt it's absolutely garbage because i'm trying to keyboard something i'm trying to be like creative but everybody froze great attempt number two so let's see if it's going to be freezing now nope okay so let's get to it into the settings and you will see why does it open app again i cannot even open settings okay so you can see it's in a very unstable situation over here don't have like the same problems with MEI like so that's way better but the android part is absolutely garbage 7.1.2 so that's basically the work version that's working on yeah come on it's do a boot absolutely not worth it garbage absolutely pure garbage so when it comes to the hyperbase fc i must say that it's like a new thing when it comes to the hard drive i didn't see this before on like one of those devices it's a quite interesting way we do have like cheap chemical controllers that do have like an okay d-pad but they don't like play at all like super comfortable so and overall like it's a cheap kit this is something new but is it like really exciting in my opinion not really it's a new way to play to having like cheap storage so that's positive let me know in the comments what do you think of this with this old school chipset and a lot of problems thank you for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell and it will be great to see you in the next video